So welcome to Blue House Farm. It's owned by the Essex Wildlife Trust and we're situated between North Fanbridge and Bridgemarsh Island, which is also between Althorn. We're also on the north bank of the River Crouch here and we are 670 acre grazing marsh. So grazing marsh is typically a wet habitat. It holds a lot of water in the winter and we've got some large areas of open grassland which are favoured by things like Brent geese. And that's why we're here today. We're doing cannon trapping for Brent geese. So the site is also a Ramsar site, a site of special scientific interest, a special protection area, and we're right adjacent to the Essex Estuary's special area of conservation. So there's a lot of international and national statutory designations of this nature reserve. Brent geese are obviously a type of goose and they feed on the grasslands that we have here at the nature reserve at Blue House Farm. They come all the way from northern Siberia, so they're coming from the Tamar Peninsula and the subspecies we have here are dark-bellied Brent geese. Brent geese also come onto the nature reserve because it, we've got lots of bodies of fresh water here as well, so they like to wash themselves, so they're washing some of the salt water off them or any mud that they get on when they're feeding on the, on the estuary. So Tim's cutting some grass here with our brush cutter and I'm going to rake it up and place it in the trailer. The idea of the grass is we'll place it over the top of the cannon net so it will be hidden from the geese when they're flying over it. They're amazing birds, they can live for up to 20 years old and they're flying thousands of miles to get here to arrive at this nature reserve. So they summer in northern Siberia and then they're flying all the way down through the, through the North Sea, through the Baltic Sea, round sort of the coast of Holland and then into, into the estuaries of the southeast coast. So unlike other geese, um, Brent geese don't actually fly in skeins, they fly in loose flocks. They still do some of the whiffling behaviour that you see, and whiffling is when you'll see birds spilling air out of their wings and then dropping to the ground. Brent geese will feed on the mudflats as well as on our grassland areas here. So on the mudflats in the River Crouch they're feeding on things like eelgrass, and then they'll fly over the sea wall and then feed on the grass at high tide on the, on the nature reserve. So what they're about to do now is furl the net. So this is a cr critical part to make sure the net unfurls correctly. So what you'll see them, see them do is they, they'll take the net in their hand like that and they just run it all through their fingers and make sure that the leading edge is then um, right on the sort of the bottom and the back is at, is at the other side. Um, so it's really important when, the, when, the, when it fires that the net comes out evenly and spreads out over the flock. Right, 
So what the guys are doing at the moment is they're burying the cannons that will fire out a projectile which is clipped to the net, which will carry the net out and over the flock of Brent geese. So they have to bury the cannons first, and the reason for I'm burying them is so they get them at the correct angle. And uh, angle's critical when the cannon fires, because we don't want them obviously to hit the, the geese at ground level, and we don't want them to go too high, uh, and then the net won't spread out correctly. So this is the cannon here, and we've got the projectile that will come out the end on this bit here. So this is the projectile which will clip to the net. Um, there's a black powder charge in the base of this cannon in a small cartridge. It looks a bit like a shotgun cartridge. And that sits at the base of this, and that will be fired by the connecting these two cables to this um, wire here. This wire here will run out along the fence back to the farmhouse where we can remotely fire it. So the whole point of the cannon net trapping is to actually to catch the geese for conservation purposes. So we're going to ring them and there will be a little um, observation ring that goes around their leg. And that'll be, you'll be able to see that through a telescope um, or a pair of binoculars and read that um, particular identification of that Brent goose. Hopefully they'll be seen somewhere else on their migration route and um, we can then use that information to, to know where the Brent geese are moving. The other reason behind cannon netting as well is we're going to take some biometric data from the Brent geese. So the traps here from the North Thames Gull Group will be measuring things like maybe wingspan, they'll also weigh the birds, and we'll look at the general health and condition of the birds and see if it's possible to sex them as well. So there's several different things that we'll be able to look at um, when we've actually got the birds in hand. Um, the, the whole idea is that the net will fire, will um, we'll all come down, pin the net down to stop any birds escaping, um, and then we'll bag bag each birds individually and we'll take them up to the farmhouse to process them and that's where we'll do, we're on some level ground and we can do the weighing and we can put the rings on safely and the ringing is a license process as well, this whole, this whole process requires um, a license and we've also sought consent from our um, SSI officer as well to do this as we're on a site of special scientific interest here. So the net is currently set out in the field behind me, which we call Boatyard Field. It's a field that's quite popular with the Brent geese. It's also got a footpath running through it, so that's one of the things we've had to take into consideration in terms of safety. We've also moved our livestock out of that field as well, so they're out of the way. Um, all the decoys are set, so the, um, the plastic looking um, geese are all ready and behind the net. We've, um, the cable's been run out to the house, so we're all ready for that to go. Uh, all, all it is now is a waiting game, just waiting for the geese to come in and then we can fire the net and hopefully take a catch. A good sized flock of approximately 700 to 800 Brent geese have landed in Boatyard Field where we have the net set. Now it is just a waiting game to see if they will walk themselves into the catch zone or worst case scenario, they take flight. Early in the afternoon, a good number of Brent geese moved into the catch zone and the opportunity was taken to fire the net. We are now holding the net down and removing the geese individually and placing them carefully in sacks to keep them calm. The team from the ringing group are now in their element. They have years of experience in ringing birds and are license holders, which allows them to legally carry out this activity. What they are doing is securing a metal ring on the right leg of the birds with a pair of special pliers. This ring has a unique number for that bird. On the left leg they are placing a plastic green ring with two white letters which will be visible through binoculars or telescope. This green ring will allow us to monitor each bird individually, providing us with important information about the movements of the geese within the Essex estuaries and on their migration back to Siberia in the summer. The ringing group are recording biometric data of the geese by weighing them which will help with identifying if they are male or female birds. The length of the primary wing feathers is also being recorded. The geese are then transferred into the trailer where it's dark and quiet to keep them calm. The geese are being released together as a group and they will hopefully soon join back with the main flock. Essex Wildlife Trust and the North Thames Gull Group have hopefully started the beginning of a long-term monitoring project. 
The work done in ringing the Brent geese over the course of several months has hopefully laid the foundations for a legacy of information for years to come. Brent geese are long-lived birds and can live for over 20 years, so we may be seeing some of these birds for many years to come. The idea is that anyone with a pair of binoculars can take part in this monitoring project by reading the rings and submitting their records to the British Trust for Ornithology. This will allow us to gather long-term data which will be really valuable in the conservation and future of this species.